What's up guys, Roby Tech here. Welcome to a little bit of a different video, but today we're gonna walk you through all the things to do if your Intel 12th gen is running hot. I've been asked a lot about this video, but let's jump in right now. I don't know if you saw the video, but we recently did an all white 5000T build with a 12900KS and things went kind of awry. And it w gave us this like great opportunity to kind of walk you through what we do here at Roby Tech when we finish a system that we're gonna send out or that we are testing for case reviews and what we do to basically bring our temperatures in line. Things we're gonna cover is first we're gonna cover making sure you're running the right bracket. Then we're gonna talk about fan curves, just making sure your fan curves are set up, everything is good there. Third one we're gonna talk about is washer mod. So basically what to look for, should you need a washer mod, what your thermal paste will look like to look at patterns and then how to do the washer mod. And and then fourth one is undervolting. All of these things together should bring your 12th gen CPU way down in overall temperature, where you can actually then turn around and do some all core overclocking, etc., cetera, which uh, would improve performance because all of a sudden you have a ton of headroom. So that is the plan for today. Uh, let's start right here. So here we are, we have a system, very expensive system. Let me just talk a little bit about the tools that you're looking at here. So we've got Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. This is essentially my overclocking and undervolting tool. Uh, the CPU, the hardware monitor, this is what I can look at at all times for uh, temps. 3D Mark is just to make sure it's a, it's a great benchmarking tool at the end just to see where we basically got things up to. Uh, Cinebench R20, NZXT Cam, given we're using a Z73, we have to use NZXT Cam to make sure that we can do our fan curves. And then finally, Ada 64, it's just a stress test tool. Uh, let's me get a good idea of just where temps are uh, off the bat. But let's go ahead and jump into this and just show you where we are right now. So this is a 12900KS with an RTX 3090. Now, for the most part, like, yes, we are using QL fans, which aren't necessarily the best fans in the world. They look really pretty and sometimes people do. But again, this should be more than enough power because we're also <clears throat> doing a push-pull configuration with Noctua AF12. Uh, 12 uh, fans. So again, we should be able to see temps at least stock uh, in uh, maybe the high 80s, low 90s. So we're gonna go ahead and run this report right here. So I'm gonna click on this. You're gonna see stress. All I care about is CPU and FPU. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start and you're gonna see things start getting gnarly pretty dang quit. So there it is right there, 100 degrees. And we're already seeing down here, 5% thermal throttle. Um, so we already know that we have a cooling issue right off the bat with our PC. First step we're gonna do, uh, take a look at what's on our cold plate right now, and then come back and start from there. So we're gonna go ahead and stop this. Let's take a look at how things actually look in our cold plate here. Halfway. So here, you can actually see, we're actually getting a pretty good coverage of the cold plate. See, this actually looks pretty good. So if we wanted to do the washer mod, it wouldn't make any sense. We will show you what how to do that today, but right now looking at the cold plate, we're actually looking at in pretty good shape. But the thing is these right here, and I'll show you, there's a physical difference between the LGA 115X and the LGA 1700. And so you can see this is actually shorter than the other bracket. And the main reason being is this means the cold plate is going to have better contact uh, because it is going to be closer to the IHS. So we're going to switch our brackets, which in this case, all we have to do is switch to these and these will make a bigger difference. So we're gonna do this and then be done and then take a look and see what our temperatures are like after that. So step one, let's put in the right bracket. I use the stock. Uh, what came with the NZXT Z73? So what I have here is the Asetech. Uh, I ordered this off Amazon. You can get them for free from any of your manufacturers, but if you're not patient, you can just buy it. I actually have a link down below if you want to pick one of these up. If you know you have an Ace Attack one, uh, like EVGA, etc., you can you can order one of these. Change the Ace Attack. So we've we've literally got the right specs in there now. The the thing is nice and tight. Let's go and do another test and see how much that improved the overall temperature. So we're gonna open up Ada 64 here. So we're at 98, but notice, okay, coming back down, we're definitely sitting in 90s now. So we've seen a 10 degree jump so far. Now we're gonna let this run for about 15 minutes, but oh, there's 100, but still no, no, no thermal throttling. Oh, we got a small thermal throttle, but we have seen what basically was peaking at 100 now is sitting in the 90s. We've already seen a nice drop in overall temps 
uh, just from changing to the right bracket. Um, this, this doesn't seem like it's in good shape for a potential washer mod, but I do wanna show you guys what the washer mod is. And you basically have an hourglass. You can see that uh, the cold plate for the AIO isn't all the way connecting with the IHS of the CPU. Now, what we'll do is we install washers and this creates some of the pressure. So the Boeing that Intel says doesn't exist, it actually changes some of that stuff. So there's less pressure. The IHS gets more contact from the cold plate and this can have a drastic effect on the overall temperature. Before we do fan curves, let's give it the best possible chance. We're gonna take this down again, remove it one more time, install our washers. Now we have a link down in the description below. Uh, these are uh, silicon washers that we have purchased. Let's go ahead and get this taken apart again. We're actually getting the entire IHS. There's actually some spread here. Um, so, but what you would see is if you see like in the center, like almost like an hourglass shape, shape would mean that this isn't getting the contact it needs with the socket. And so this is a way of fixing it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the socket like so and move it all the way up. Now you wanna be very careful here because you're, you don't wanna damage your CPU. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this first and put in the washers. These come off very easily. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pick this up like this and you're gonna apply these little washers right over the holes, just like that. Let's put the screws back in. Go until it stopped, nothing tighter than that. And it feels when it's tight, you're good. And we're just gonna repeat that step with the bottom. Just put this down like that, similar like that. And again, now you've sealed it. Okay, so washer mods applied. Let's just see where things are with Ada 64. Looks like about the same, not like a massive temperature difference, not that I was expecting it. Like the cold plate was fine, it was getting plenty of contact. So now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to start playing with fan curves. These six fans, your front fans in the rear, are actually controlled by the uh, IQ. Uh, this is controlled, these three are controlled by NZXT, and then this and this are all both controlled by Asus. So I'm just letting you know when you're seeing me change fans, that's what I'm actually changing here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, and this is gonna be different for everybody. So, so I'm gonna open up NZXT. I'm gonna go to cooling. And here's our pump, and I'm gonna actually set it to performance fans. I'm gonna do the same thing, performance, set these both to performance. So here's what you see. You can see here I'm running at performance. It's basically at 75% once the temperature, and then from there it'll go to 100%. And the other thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and go into IQ. Okay, now we're gonna go to our dashboard. Oops, not here, dashboard. We're gonna go to our lighting S5000, and then we're gonna go to cooling. Then we're actually gonna change these to balanced. I actually have push-pull fans, and those are actually run off of the motherboard. So that one I'm gonna need to order, open up Armory Crate on Asus. Now I'm gonna go over here and click on this and go to Fan Expert. Uh, take our CPU fan and we're gonna change it up. Okay, so everything here looks good. Uh, we wanna do uh, turbo on that. So again, higher thing for here. Chassis fan one, same kind of thing. Uh, we're gonna do turbo on that one. Everything there looks good. Okay, so it's got, a, it's got a pretty good, so at like 70 and 80 it goes from there, but everything here looks like it's gonna spin up from there. Okay, so everything looks good. We have, we our pump is here, performance is here. Let's see what we get open case for our cooling. So starting this up. Yeah, fans are way tuning hybrid now. Still not a whole ton. I'm just gonna test this running with max fans just to see what we end up with, uh, with Ada 64. So this is like everything on a fan curve at max. So let's see what this does. We're not getting any thermal throttling now. Maybe, nope, nope, still, oh, we got 1% there. We have improved things just with changing the mount, right, which was super important. We didn't see as much of an improvement, if any at all, uh, from the washer mod. We've now changed our fan curve. Let's see what we can do just with a slight undervolt. But in order to do that correctly, I, we gotta do something just to set a baseline. So let's go ahead and run up CPU ID. 
There it is right there. So you can see we're still getting 5,200 meg. Now remember, this is a KS. This is the hottest of the, um, this is the hottest of the Intel CPU. So we're gonna go ahead and go from here. We can see that it's actually boosted there. So go and bring this up. Okay, let's go ahead and start our run. Bring this up and then we'll see just to make sure. So again, we're seeing, there's the boosts. You're seeing all the clocks doing what they're supposed to. Core temperatures are in the 90s. 98, there's 100. 52, 50, 50, 99, 51. So not seeing any, any issues there. The only thing we're seeing is it's not boosting as long as what it is. We're seeing 96, 97, 98, there's 100 right there. And there we go. So we still saw 52, it hit, hit 52, uh, no issue whatsoever. Okay, so there's our score right there, 10, 5, 2, 9, 2. Now watch this. So we're gonna close this. Let's open the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. And this is where we talk about undervolting. Now undervolting is what it is, is a lot of these things. And there's some other things I could do, like uh, change like the MCE and some other things within ASUS boards, but that gets crazy. The one thing that's nice about this, this is something you can do without getting into the BIOS and playing with a lot of settings. So I'm gonna go to Advanced Tuning and hit I, I Agree. Okay, so here it says Core Voltage Offset. I'm gonna set this to zero, negative 0 0.5. Okay, hit Apply. I'm gonna hit continue. We're gonna give it a negative 0.05 undervolt, okay? So there it is. Now we've got a negative 0.05 undervolt. Let's see what our temperatures are now and just see if we actually end up getting a set. Now remember, we have a baseline here. Gonna bring up our same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and hit start, hit run. Bring up our thing, here we go, running right now. And look, temperatures are now 93, 96, 94. 97, we've already seen, do we, will we ever see 100? 97, 98, 97, 97, 98. So we actually are seeing lower temperatures already, 96, 97, 98, and we're still hitting all of those same performance things. So there we go, it gets done. Ooh, there we saw one 100, but we got 10, 5, 72. So we actually saw an overall improvement in our overall score just with that intervolt. So we're bringing, we're taking some of the core temperature, we're taking some of the uh, voltage away, but actually increasing the performance because now we're not hitting thermal throttling and anything like that. So let's go ahead and try this. Same thing that we just did. Let's go ahead and do our core all offset. Let's set it to 0.75, hit apply, continue and we're gonna hit run again. So here we go, running again. Now let's take a look at temperatures. Okay, 88, 89, 90, 92, 89, 93, 90, 92. We've seen a significant, almost a 10 degree jump right there. And looking down here at our processor, 5.1, 59, 52, we're still seeing the same boost clocks, but our temperature is almost now almost 10 degrees cooler under with a heavy load and now 10 576 so we've actually gone up again in performance but our temperatures overall have come down let's go ahead and put the covers on here in ada 64 we now have an almost 20 degree drop just with some undervolting. And there you have it guys, a entire rundown of basically the generic steps. And that was the thing that I was really careful with because I know people are gonna say, why didn't you turn off the Asus? Why didn't you turn off uh, Core Enhancement? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? I wanted to give you general things that you can do to help improve your overall performance and cooling on your 12th gen CPU. And so this works, I mean, 12700K, 12900K, 12900KS. Again, we were playing with the most powerful uh, CPU on the market. And again, there was definitely things that we need to do to get things back under control. So before we put in the bracket, we were sitting thermal throttling anywhere between 10, anywhere between eight and 10%, and we were hitting 100 right off the bat almost. Then we put in the new bracket, dropped things down into the high 90s. We were seeing two to 3% thermal throttling. Then we improved things slightly more uh, with a overall uh, fan curve. We did add the washer mod. Uh, again, we saw no improvement there, but again, you got a nice, you got a nice update on that. You know, know how to do it if you want to do, if you want to see that. And I told you what to look for with the washer mod in terms of improving your temperatures. And then lastly, we did undervolting and we just showed that by undervolting, we didn't reduce performance because we used R20 as a benchmark. And then now at the end, 
what was essentially 100 plus degrees and a 12% thermal throttle. Now you can see here running at a CPU package of 84 degrees, no thermal throttle, and we have the exact same performance we started out of the box. This, the fan curve looks nice, and this PC is basically essentially ready to go out the door. But what did you think of this video? I'd love to know what you thought, and remember, at the same time, you could win a little cash uh, just by leaving us a comment down below of what your thoughts were. Did you learn something? Do you like videos like these? These are new for us. These are unscripted. These are just me, raw, trying to take some of the things that I've learned and apply them to you. If you wanna win that cash, uh, the way that that essentially works is you just gotta leave a quality comment. It doesn't have to be positive. It can be negative, it can be feedback, but really it just can't be, can I have a free CPU? Hey, are you giving me this PC? Or anything similarly lame. Uh, and you need to make sure you leave an email in your YouTube profile so we have a way to reach out to you. Super clear, we will not tell you via the YouTube comments that you want anything. It will always be an email from somebody at, Roby, at robytech.com who will reach out and let you know uh, if you won something. I'd love to know down in the comments below what you thought about this video and of course your feedback. Now while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we go live right here on Robitech. Also, did you know we have a live channel? Like in fact, we built this and tested this originally on the live channel. Check down in the description below. We have a link down to Robitech Live. Uh, you can find out our times and start. Just make sure you like and subscribe there so every time we do go live. Lastly, uh, if you have questions about this or you want further information, head on over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech. We have a ton of tech enthusiasts, PC enthusiasts, who'd love to have these conversations with you if you want to take these further. I'm also hanging out there all the time. So if there's stuff that you want to learn or have questions about this, make sure to head on over there. We have lots of people who'd love to help you and guide you on the way. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.